Hi, I'm Larry Dignan with Constellation Insights, and we're here with John Krell. He's the Chief Information Officer and Digital Officer at Jewelers Mutual Group. Hi, John. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Larry. So glad to be here with you. So first off, congrats on being in the BT150. And I guess let's just start off with an overview of Jewelers Mutual Group and, and kind of what you're hoping to do. Jewelers Mutual Group is an insurance company that provides insurance to the jewelry industry, both to retail jewelers, to personal line customers. Like if you get engaged and you have an engagement ring and you get new insurance for that. And we also have a lot of products and services to raise the tide of the whole industry. For example, we have a, a shipping solution. So we provide products and services to to the entire jewelry industry focused on insurance. So how do you think about customer experience? Do you look at different experiences for like the end buyer, the personal lines and the, the jewelers themselves? I guess, how do you break that down? Yeah, we look at it through, I, I actually think about it through four different kind of lenses. One, we have the retail jeweler that has an experience and a need. Our personal lines consumer has a, has a different view and need. Our agents, which are very important to our company, has a, has a third and then our employees. And we want to make sure that all the experiences are what they need to either do their job or to purchase insurance or process a claim or work with consumers. It's, it's, it's very personalized based upon the type of need that you have. And how are you thinking through AI in terms of how it applies to those experiences? Yeah. I, I, the way I kind of think about AI is, you know, our, our ultimate vision is personalization at the point of interaction. And we feel that AI will help us really live that vision where we, we can use AI to make the decision at the point of inter interaction, provide us information to personalize the experience and meet the customer where they want to be met. So AI is a, a key enabler of our strategy to real, to create personalized, differentiated experiences for our customers. Do you think it'll play a role in terms of automation and moving processes, whether it's claims or the, those sort of back end things? For sure, we're going to be doing we're doing experiments today in providing improving efficiencies and automations and and many of our processes, including claims. So it's it's really going to be a key component of creating operational efficiency and creating value that way beyond just driving personalization at the point of interaction. How, how do you prioritize those two? I mean, I guess where, where are the easy wins and then you can kind of snowball from there. Yeah. I think as we, as we're, you know, we, we want to be, we want to be on the forefront of investing and experimenting in AI. And I would say it doesn't necessarily start with prioritization. It, it starts with looking at risk and opportunities and doing experiments with AI. That's that's where we're at right now to really learn, understand the value, and then and then off of that, prioritize those experiments to say, hey, we want to invest more. So we're not like putting 50 things up on the wall and saying, okay, what is the perfect AI use case? We're saying, hey, let's start experimenting, learning, growing, and then evolving our organization to create value out of uh, out of the AI in these experiments. So how do you think about buying versus building AI? Or are you building your own tools or is there stuff you can buy off the shelf at this point? Yeah, it's it's a little bit of both on on the buy versus the build. So, you know, I think the 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 cloud capability, the data processing capability, the the large model capability, we're going to be we're going to be buying what we have to own is our data the training data the proprietary data that we need to feed and trade the models our business logic how things work how we create value um, we're going to own so we're going to leverage you know we're going to leverage the, the the great capabilities that are out there from very large tech companies and then we're going to make it work within our environment and and really really do an awesome job at managing our data and, and making sure that we can leverage our data in a way that creates value for our customers. And what, what metrics are you looking at, or I guess what are your most valuable metrics in terms of not just measuring Gen AI progress, but also just the customer experience in general? 
Well, one of the core core metrics we have is, of course, net promoter score, which we do on a very regular basis to get feedback from our customers. So uh, we want to understand if they're a promoter or not of our company, of which our our promoter score is very strong. And we want to make sure we're making investments to to continue to get that promoter score up and to get to have promoters from our customers and, and consumers. So that is a, a key metric. In terms of returns on the AI projects, are, is it more time-based or how are you thinking that through? Well, again, we're very early on. So, you know, I think we're going to, we believe strongly that we're going to get returns on this, but we are definitely in experimentation mode. Automation efficiency is absolutely going to be a return cycle time but I, I think that the key return is is going to be around that personalization and and tailoring the experiences and creating great customer experiences that will lead to people wanting to use our products and services. It could lead to more you know personalized growth. It could lead to upsell and cross sell opportunities. As we as we create those better personalized experiences, our customers will engage. They'll retain. They'll create lifetime value for our company. And how do you how do you think about modeling a customer volatility and risk? I mean, I, I did see a thing on your site where it talked about, you know, if you were impacted by recent hurricanes and mm -hmm. things like that. But but I assume you don't have the exposure that home and auto would obviously have. I guess how do you think through that? And is there is there an angle for AI there too? Yeah, measure you know, leveraging it for volatility is definitely there. And we we are exposed. I mean, we have retail jewelers that we ensure that are impacted by hurricanes and other events. Our personal line customers are also impacted. So, you know, we, we have we have a team that is looking at the analytics off the, the storm pass and, and trying to predict and trying to help our customers uh, to get prepared for these events. So that is absolutely happening. And then how are you budgeting for the next couple of years? Like, I guess when, I guess what's the roadmap look like in terms of, you know, getting some of these pilot product pilot projects, the production, mm -hmm. how do you account for that budget wise? It's really a, an innovation and experimentation investment bucket. So we, we have an investment already going on and we actually have a, a small team that is doing the experiments. We work as a leadership team to look at the different areas of our company that we want to do investments and experiments in AI is and data is one of those. We'll be investing heavily in in preparing our data, getting it ready for the training models and, and the environment to, you know, to capture that data internally and externally to be used by the models. So that will be one foundational investment, getting the data ready. And then we're going to be investing in experiments. And when we, when we see experiment creating value, we'll, we'll invest more to, to, to unleash that value. How, how important is it to think through a future proofing? I mean, if you track the models, I mean, it seems like every two weeks there's some big leap of some sort and it's, you know, it's fun to watch, but I imagine planning, planning to swap models around and things like that has to be a little jarring given yeah. how fast the industry is moving. Uh, how do you think that through? We're thinking through it a little broader than just AI. I, I've been really thinking through, as you think about our overall buy and build kind of approach, we're, you know, very much buy services at the foundational and then as we get closer to the customer to differentiate with custom software and we are architecting our environment to be very microservice based very open very agile so that we can rapidly swap independent components out so that we're not so tightly coupled that every time something changes we have a big event so that is like an end-to-end -end thought process on how we architect our systems from data, from technology, from how we do software engineering, how we do models, how we embed models. That That is that is a, an area that we're spending a ton of time on to make sure we are future ready and that we're, we can take advantage of new things that are coming out because they're coming out very fast. So the way you see it, the, the more custom work, and, and I guess the secret sauce is basically the that access closer to the customer that's kind of where that's the competitive advantage pretty much we want to differentiate at the point of interaction and that's where we're going to be investing both uh, data analytics ai and custom custom software to create that that great experience for our customers any questions i didn't ask that i should have you know that 
we talk we talk a lot about AI. I, I just think there's a human element that we need to spend more time on that, you know, people are going through change where we have a lot of learning going on, how to how to take advantage of of these models and, and get your organizations ready, I think is another area like changing the way you work, not just automating things that you do today. I think you got to take a step back and change the way you work and, and really think about disrupting your processes, not just optimizing your processes. So I think that the people element is a is a key component of it. There's tons of risk and rewards with this. So to make sure you go in your with your eyes wide open that, hey, you get great value or potential value out of AI, but there's some risks and go in with your eyes wide open on that, like data privacy, data protection, I think is a is a key key concept to think about. So those are a couple other areas that I think about. And then ultimately, I think there's some foundational IT practices that are super important to this. Like we are creating a connected ecosystem of, of all kinds of things internally, externally services, custom software, purchase software, purchase services. And, and I think how you keep your environment resilient and up and running and operational, I think is going to be a continued challenge for our technology leaders. And, and I think it's going to be a big area of focus. I think it's getting, you know, how we think and architect our systems for, to make sure that they're there when our customers need to be there and all the services to support it, I think is, is very important. How do you sell that to the boardroom? I mean, you know, change management is critical. So is culture. It's decidedly less sexy than generative AI. How do you make that case to the, you know, to the broader leadership team? Well, I, I think it's like we we believe our people are our differentiators. So it's not, you know, AI is a tool. There'll be other tools. So how we we operate is, you know, it's it's people are, you know, especially in the insurance industry, it's based upon a, a promise to our customers. So, you know, we spend a lot of time about with both with our teams and and all different stakeholders on the importance of of, of talent the the mindset how we're going to work together how we're going to change we're going to work we believe that is a, a key component that is kind of built into our leadership team and 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 is a big component of our of our company so i'm not sure if it's a if it's a it's a sell in i think it's a foundational way that we work and we believe all right very insightful good stuff thanks for joining us all right thank you larry